Gyna Camastia. Today I want to talk about something that has affected my life uh, since the age of 14. It's affected the way I behave around people, it's affected my clothing choices, um, and it's affected my overall confidence. Uh, and it's also known as man boobs, moobs, or man tees. The growth of larger than normal breast tissue usually happens when there's a imbalance of testosterone and estrogen. Um, and this can occur when certain people hit puberty, when certain people take steroids, and uh, it does happen when you become overweight or obese. This all started when I was uh, in puberty, uh, you know, 14 years old, things start changing, start getting hair in places. Uh, you start, maybe in my particular case, I'm getting wider before I got taller, voice started changing, but um, my chest started to get larger as well. So it wasn't just me that noticed this, obviously. Um, when you're in school, when you're getting changed for PE, yeah, generally just taking your shirt off in the, you know, in the changing rooms it's gonna get picked up, it did get picked up to a point where, you know, I started getting teased and uh, to a degree bullied. I say bullied, you know, it is kids just noticing something different. Uh, that's the way I see it now, but obviously as a kid, um, it wasn't very nice and, and you know, it, it did affect my confidence, you know, um, to a point where they would say, Dan, show us your titties, are you wearing a bra? Um, it, horrible, horrible stuff, uh, you know, I, I think about now. and. And that's kind of went on throughout my entire life, actually, not just as a kid, but kind of I started, you know, obviously getting more friends. Um, every single job that I went to, people would notice it. People would say something. It would be a, a kind of time in my head where I'd be like, right, you know, you get comfortable with someone after the first couple of weeks, they will mention it. It is a, it's a fact, all right, because it's different. It's different to what everyone else has. Um, and you can't really see it that much right now, but. Uh, I'm sure I've shown pictures and I'll show you a bit more uh, in a little bit but this is one of the ways that I, I hide it and um, it's, it's affected me uh, for, as I said for a very long time so not only was uh, you know kids at school noticing um, not only were my friends noticing my work colleagues noticing the girls that I was with they started noticing as well to a degree where the first time I ever took off my top uh, in front of a girl, she laughed at me. She laughed at, you know, having uh, a bigger chest than normal. And every time I took off my top in front of a girl for the first time, I would always be think thinking in the back of my head. She, some cases they say something, some cases they don't. But you know, in your head, that's what they noticed. If I, you know, if someone walks in the room and they've got one leg, for example, you're gonna notice it's something different, you can see it. And if I start having a conversation with them, I'm probably gonna ask them about it. I don't think that it's rude. Um, I feel like that you can talk about because it's different. And again, in this particular case, this is different, but it's not something, I don't mind talking about it, don't get me wrong, um, but, Every time I talk about it, it reinforces the fact that it's there and it's different. And it, again, it's, it's, it's shocked my confidence. So there are certain ways that I got around um, almost trying to hide it. So again, from the early age of maybe like 15, 16, where I kind of started buying my own clothes or whatever, started working, I would wear clothes like this, okay? That wouldn't, it wouldn't be as noticeable. So, dark clothes that hide the shadow uh, underneath or uh, kind of around the nipple. Wearing uh, shirts that kind of have uh, open shirts, for example, um, are really good at hiding it. I would always be wearing a jumper. At my school, um, it's, it's, we didn't have blazers, so I'd always be wearing a jumper. So that's how it's affected me. It's, it's, again, it's affected um, every every single bit of it now let me go around i've tried different things to try and reduce the amount of um reduce the size of it i've lost a, a large amount of weight i'm about five foot eight 
Um, I went on some crazy diet that got me down to about nine and a half stone. However, it didn't matter how skinny I was, um, they would always still be noticeable because it's the actual breast tissue um, that's kind of in your chest and almost not the fat around it. Um, but it did, it did help, don't get me wrong, it just didn't remove it completely, so it was still being noticed. I remember one of my friends, um, when they saw how much weight I lost, and said, yeah, you still got the titties though. So finally, um, after months and months and months and months and months of, of uh, saving and scrimping and saving, um, I have finally, uh, the other day, booked to have my gynecomastia surgery. Uh, or also known as a male breast reduction surgery. So uh, I'm very excited. I want to document the whole process. Um, I've already had a consultation. It was a video consultation because we are in 2020. Uh, still can't do face-to-face -face things. So I had a video consultation where they looked um, at the size of it, the size of me. Um, in my particular case, and with this particular surgeon, um, he suggested that I do a, a small part of liposuction, but they also um, remove the, the kind of whole, um, I think it's the milk gland um, or, or breast tissue that's inside, so that'll be removed. Hopefully, future me is very happy and um, I'm looking forward to it. What's up guys? Um, so I just traveled to Manchester, um, traveled yesterday. Um, it's probably been around close to two months since I, I did my last video. I did the last video uh, at the beginning of December when I booked the surgery uh, and now it's kind of near the end of January. Um, I think it is today the 21st, 21st of January. Um, so yeah, a bit of time has passed. Um, surgery is today at three o'clock. I have to be there. Um, it's it's only a two hour long surgery. It's not very long at all. Um, I am able to eat. I've just eaten um, some leftover foods that I bought from last night because we're still in COVID. I had to order some pizza. So I had that for uh, this morning for breakfast. So that was very good. Um, it's under general uh, local anesthetic. So I don't, I'm not gonna go under uh, full asleep during the, during the procedure. So I'll be laying on the bed. But yeah, I'm excited. The, this um, particular procedure um, is gonna cost me 3,700 pounds. Um, and that is uh, of January 2021. It would have been 3,500, but because of the liposuction, uh, they add an extra 200 pounds on. But that's for stage two, I think, uh, whatever I said it was, stage two. Um, if you're in any of the other stages, if you're a bit bigger and need more liposuction, then it can be more expensive. And likewise, if you're a little bit smaller than I am, uh, then um, it'll obviously be a small bit cheaper. Uh, but I got it done in Manchester. The London one uh, cost about £600 more. So I thought I'd spend uh, £100 on, on the train getting up here, £100 on hotel, um, uh, to say, you know, £200 spent to save realistically 400 in the long run so um all exciting i shall probably do a bit of filming while i'm in there i haven't done public filming before so um i might be a bit nervous when i do it but awesome bye all right we're here with daniel pritchard <laughs> we're cleaning him up and getting him ready for his gynecomastia surgery how are you feeling? I'm feeling all right. You're a natural with that. <laughs> it's are like you, you've done it before. Are you excited? I'm very excited. I'm all looking right. forward to it. Me too, me too. We're going to fix you up. <laughs> all right. So this is the before. We'll get some pictures up for you guys so you can see them. Uh, we'll get you some more video in a little bit. Yeah. Okay, so we're doing the vaser part. We've already put an aesthetic in locally. And we're melting the fat. That is the sound of fat melting. It's screaming. <laughs> <laughs> no smiling. <laughs> no, you smile. Okay. <laughs> right, so now we're doing Get the lipo suction. We've melted all the fat. Just, just sucking it up. There it goes. Are you enjoying yourself? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing more fun than this, that's what you just told me. <laughs> So come on down, we'll get, we'll get you next. <laughs> Looking forward to the next one. That is struggling. Oh my 
out. It's the big one. We've done the one side, beautiful, nice and flat chest. And now, we'll do the other side, we've already done the light one and the laser. Here's the gland, you can see it pop up, and we're starting to release it. It wants to come out, it just doesn't, doesn't want to stay in there anymore. <laughs> Alright, so we just finished it. Yep. It looks great, it feels great, it was fun, exciting. Woo! He's going to the beach. Yeah. Where are you hitting? In Pisa? Ma uh, Ma Magaloo. All right, Magaloo. all right. Magaloo. Magaloo. <laughs> Gonna be a new person. Did we capture his youth? Hey, thank you very much, Mr. John. No problem. Appreciate it. See you. No, no hopefully I don't see you soon. <laughs> right. It's done. I've had the surgery. What do you think? Flat. I feel a bit bloated because I just had a sandwich. Um, but. It's done. Oh, it's. I can't get over how happy I am with it. I was gonna say how good it, I think it looks good. I think it looks ten million times better than what it did before. Uh, I can't stop looking at myself in the mirror. I'm gonna ignore that little lump. I've got a. That's just fat. That's just. That, I'll talk about that in a second. But it's so flat. It's so flat. <laughs> I can't get over it. So I'll talk you through the process of what actually happened. Um, I was awake through the entire thing. They don't put you to sleep, um, but I couldn't see much. I had a mask on obviously for, for COVID. So I couldn't really see my chest. My mask was covering it. Um, the only bits they, they showed me was once they kind of cut out the breast tissue, they showed me it and it was pretty gory. Um, and you'll probably see in the video, um, hopefully if I, if I have it, um, of how, how gory it is. So um, the surgeons and the people were so nice. I had a, a gentleman by the name of John. I don't know if his last name was John or his first name was John, but they called him Dr. John. Um, but it was an American guy. Um, it was a switch up from surgeon to the one I originally had consultancy, um, a consult, sorry. Um, but this guy was, we, we just, we were talking and having a laugh through the entire surgery. Um, I didn't want to distract him too much, so I was uh, probably less talkative than I normally am. Um, but um, but the process is is that they they cut um, where your nipple is. They cut a line underneath your nipple. Firstly, they inject you in loads of places uh, to numb the area, uh, and then cut underneath the nipple. So the first stage is liposuction. So. They, they have a rod, they stuff it in, in different areas, and it blasts water and um, some sort of medicine stuff uh, in, into, your, into, the, into the area. And they do that in several places all around. The reason why is, I assume, is because the next stage is they get another rod and it, um, it blasts the fat. So it vaporizes the fat. I assume the water is to protect everywhere else um, from the, the, the vaporizer. So the vaporizer uh, destroys all the fat around it, breaks it up into tiny parts, um, which that part is, is fairly uncomfortable. Although they're none the entire area, there were certain areas, I don't know if you were pushing up quite high where the anesthetic, the, the anesthetic wasn't like, as an effective, um, it was quite a sharp pain in some places, um, but you, you get over it. It's not too painful. There was a part over here where it was vaporizing, and I was like, "Oh my!" It was like crazy pain. But as soon as he stopped, the pain stopped, and they just numbed it a little bit more. Um, again, they, they try and cover all the area, but in some places that it's not as effective. But the pain wasn't horrendous. Um, once they vaporize it, they get another rod in, and it sucks all of the fat out. Um, so the, the chain, the fat chamber was probably about that wide and it's probably at the end, probably about that much filled uh, with fat. And then the, the actual breast tissue, what they have to do is, is attached by fibers. So it has to go around and cut all the fibers off. Now, some of these fibers have nerves in, some of the fibers have uh, veins in, um, and it's just about the kind of cutting and dealing with it. 
Um, that's why sometimes it felt like someone's got a needle and just pricked my nipple. That's what it felt like. Um, so it was quite a sharp pain, in, and probably about like three or four times in each in each side. And then if it bleeds, then it'll pat it down. So once that was out, then that's obviously released and then sew back up. So as I say, it's about an hour each side. The, 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 the left side, the, the side he does last, because they do one at a time, is a little bit quicker than the right side, because once they know how your body works on the right side, he knows how to deal with it on the left-hand side, supposedly. So uh, that side was a little bit quicker. Uh, in my <laughs> surgery, I got scared quite a lot of times. Well, not, not quite, quite a, quite a lot, um, because he'd completely done the right side. Right side was finished, all sewn up. He moved round the table to the left-hand side, and he stepped on a wire, and I felt the, the wire was going across here, and I just felt it pull down. And I was like, that was interesting. And uh, one of the assistants come along, like, what have you stepped on? And um, one of the, the kind of laser cutters, he snapped the, the, the pin and it goes into the machine, snapped off. And I was like, you are, you've got to be joking. You've got to be joking. What, like, am I gonna be walking around? Are they, can they even continue with the surgery? That's what I thought in my head. Can you continue with the surgery? And uh, <laughs> I was just scared. I was like, am I gonna walk around with one, one breast and, and one flat chest? I <laughs> how's that gonna look? How am I supposed to gonna work? How am I supposed to go in public with that? Um, but luckily, they they must have used another tool. I, to be honest, I didn't actually feel any difference while they were doing it. Um, and they must have. They, I don't know if they were using the, the same tool but a different one or a completely different tool. I didn't feel a difference, um, so it didn't really matter too much. But it did scare me when that happened. <laughs> Um, but yeah, the Signature Clinic is, is the people I came from, awesome people, um, the, the assistant nurse, the two assistant nurses um, were you know, really funny as well, so we had a good laugh and we listened to some music and it was just, it was just a good experience. Uh, so now, it's probably been about two or three hours after surgery, I travel back in a taxi back to the hotel. Um, at the moment, I don't feel any pain, zero pain. Um, I have a bandage wrapped around me. Um, I'll probably just take this off. So I have this bandage all around me. You can see how flat it is. I've actually looked at this. It's got all the markings still, but you can see how it's just fat. It's just built up around here. Looks a bit weird, actually. Um, but yeah, I have to keep this on for two days. Uh, I have antibiotics that I have to take. Uh, one tablet every three days. Um, I can take paracetamol, ibuprofen um, when I need it. Um, I need to go buy some. Uh, and then once that, I can take that off and put these, remove, I think I have to remove all the bandages and then put new ones on. Uh, just These just go over the nipples. Once that is done, I then have this vest. To put on so this is a compression vest um, and it, it kind of goes on with little what I can only describe as bra clips oh, they're quite tough to get them off how am I supposed to take this oh yeah so little bra clips <laughs> and uh, this has to stay on for I think another four weeks um, as far as I'm aware, so um, I have to wear this continuously for four weeks. I can't shower while I have this on, so a light wash, wash the armpits and obviously all the areas, a light wash. Um, I can start running again because uh, I like running. I can start running again after two weeks after surgery. I can't go to the gym, not that they're open or not that I go to the gym. Uh, for six weeks after the surgery. But yeah, it's, it's awesome, it's great. I highly recommend the surgery, highly recommend the, the procedure, the surgeons. Um, it's just been an awesome experience. Hopefully um, I'll, I'll do another video once this comes off um, and show you a little bit more detail, but 
feel so bloated. Um, but I'm so I'm so happy. I feel a bit weird. With, I feel like a, this is a boob tube. Um, but very happy. So yeah, awesome. I'll put another video up um, when I can take this off. All right. Hi. All right. Okay. Uh, it's been two days since my surgery. Um, and I'm now able to take the vest off. Um, or the, the, not the vest, the uh, bandages. So uh, I thought I'd do it on camera. This is probably going to be the last segment that I do. Have a good look at it um, before I end the video. So again, um, I can't, I don't have an excuse for the big belly. I just need to lose some weight now. Um, but yes, this is what it's like now. And uh, Oh, it's, it's been a different experience over the last two days. Um, you can see some bruising here, some bruising here. To be honest, this has been uh, rough, uh, just kind of rubbing up and down my skin, to be honest. Um, I am expecting bruising underneath. Um, obviously, there's a lot of prodding going along, a lot of, kind of burning, so I would imagine there will be bruising under this. Uh, so I'm not looking it to be pretty um but the sleep i have had you had to sleep upright um which has been uncomfortable and uh i've had a lot of, it's been really sore you can sort of see a red line there it's been really sore there so i'm actually looking forward to getting this off um not sure how i do it i think is there a band on somewhere i'll cut uh, to where um, i think i know how to get this off Oh. 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 That is a relief to get it off. Oh wow. <laughs> it still looks so strange to me. Oh. It still looks so bizarre. I can still imagine them being out here. Oh. Uh, but that is that. You can see the rashes. Oh. Well, that's been happening, so I have to remove this now. Oh, it still feels strange. It feels very strange. Um, I want to put my vest on straight away because it feels so bizarre. Um, but yeah, wow. I mean, you can see. You can see all the bruising that's been happening. Right, that's on the tightest one. So, <sighs> there we are. <sighs> it's on the tightest one, it's compressed. To me, it feels like this is down more than this one was. Um, I don't know. I know he took more out of this one. So I'm, I'm only hoping that he did look around there quite a lot. So I don't know if it's normal to have one slightly larger than the other, um, especially at this early stage. I still have obviously four weeks to fully recover. So uh, oh, I'm like shaking kind of seeing that. It's, it's a bit scary seeing a, a part of you after surgery because um, it feels like a part of you missing. You, you know, I've had this particular problem you know, since the age of 14. So 
feeling, knowing that a part of me has now been incinerated up in Manchester and is not there anymore, it's, it's bizarre. Um, the weird taking off the plasters, I didn't feel like I had much feeling there, but I don't know if I was just shaking because of it. Um, yeah, it's all interesting. I'm actually eager to get this video out, um, to be honest. Uh, and you know, I, I don't want to wait another six weeks to put up a video, another video. So if you found this interesting, um, then feel free to subscribe. I'm not a YouTuber by any stretch of the imagination, but I want to get this video out. Um, because it's, it's, I just want to share my story and share the experience. Um, if, if I get enough people uh, that have enjoyed this particular content, um, then I can put up a recap video of once it's all healed, showing all, all the kind of normality of it afterwards, um, then you know I, I'll do that happily. So um, I did want to kind of show the entire journey, but once this, I've got a lot of footage which you've now seen, I'm just excited to get that out in, uh, out into the world. So to recap over the whole video, um, if you have this particular problem, try to go to the gym, try to lose some weight, try eat healthier, try and, try and lose it as much as you can. If it's the puffy nipples that are affecting you, then by all means, you know, go, go get the surgery. It, it's something that I wish I'd done earlier. I wish I'd done it in you know my early 20s. Um, if you're in your teens or just coming into your 20s, a lot of gynecomastia, once it becomes into during puberty, can go before the age of 25 because it's a hormone imbalance. Once your hormones level out, maybe in your later years, if you're a late bloomer, for example, it can kind of disappear and, and sort itself out. Um, however, the, the surgeon said, if you're over the age of 25 and it's still there, it's probably going to stay with you for life. Um, potentially. So, hey, look, I'm not a professional, I'm not a surgeon, I'm not a doctor. Um, if you have any concerns about your body or anything that I talked about within this video, go seek professional advice. Do not take my word for gospel. This is just what I uh, picked up along the way. So, um, yes, thank you very much for watching, and uh, I'll do a little montage, I guess. <laughs> Cheers, bye.